Good morning. Welcome to Oak Ridge United Methodist Church, our online worship service. You are going to be so blessed today. And we are so glad that you joined us. We would like you to let us know that you've joined us by going to our website and filling out our attendance. It's our way of knowing you are here, and we are just so thankful you are. Please know that our church is very active right now. We have something on Wednesday night called GLOW, God Loves Our Worship. That is for the children, the youngest. And it is a time of socially distanced learning to worship God. On Wednesday nights, we have dessert and discipleship. It's a time to have a little sweet treat and a sweet treat of learning from the Word of God and getting that uh, just nourishment from the Word. So we just have all kinds of opportunities. Make sure you check us out on our Facebook page to keep up with us and this website so that you can continue to know what's going on because every week we are adding something new and some way that you can connect to us. Again, we are so glad you are here. We want to stay connected to our church family and we want to reach out to our guests. And so there's a very simple way to do that. Here's all you've got to do. Go to the home page of our website, oakridgeumc.org, and select watch slash visit on the navigation bar. If you're accessing us through your phone, just tap on those three lines that they call the hamburger. Look for check-in on the drop-down menu. We've got convenient links to the online bulletins for our services. Then, check in with us. We promise not to bug you. Fill in your name, number attending, and tell us if you're joining us for morning drive-in, online, or evening outdoor worship services. Be sure to let us know if you're a first-time guest by checking the visitor box. If you'd like to leave a comment or have a question, Scroll down to contact us and select email us from resources. We are thrilled that we get to worship with you. your kids being involved in Sunday school? Are you missing that time that they get to do fun activities and learn about God's Word? Well, if so, I have the solution for you. Starting September 13th, we're offering Sunday School to Go. Inside that box will be everything that you need to have Sunday school with your kids at home. There's even a parent portion, so it's for the whole family. We want kids to have a fun way to learn about Christ, but not feel like it's more schoolwork. So you won't find anything virtual inside that box. You won't find any kind of activity they have to do, and it feels like homework. It's fun things that they get to enjoy, be with you, and learn about God's work. So come by the church and pick yours up. Starting September the 13th, you'll see it under the drive through There'll be a shelf on wheels, and I promise you won't miss it. Pick up your Sunday school to go. If you have more than one child, make sure you get one for each. Enjoy. Hey, come get the order. And darkness tries to hide 
and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Hopes and dreams to you, Jesus. 
us I'm reaching my hands to yours Believing so much more Knowing that all you have in store for me is good It's good Today is the day you have made I will rejoice and be glad in it Today is the day you have made I will rejoice and be glad in it And I won't worry about tomorrow I'm trusting in what you say Today is the day All my days I live for you. And all my days I live for you. And I will stand upon your truth. And I will stand upon your truth. And all my days I live for you. And all my days I live. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in Today is the day you have made I will rejoice and be glad in it And I won't worry about tomorrow I'm giving you my fears and sorrows Where you lead me I will follow I'm trusting in what you say Today is the day Whatever we are carrying, whatever joys we want to celebrate, and take it to the Lord in prayer. So let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we come to you this day. The day you have made, we rejoice in it. Lord, we are so thankful for this chance to just slow down and to worship you. This chance to not think about anything but worshiping you and what you taught us, Lord. How you guide us and lead us. We come this day, Lord, in need of you. Our souls are just saying, give me Jesus. Lord, fill us up. Help our cups to overflow. And Lord, help it to run over. Help us to know you and to feel you and to see you in every way. For you are with us. You have not abandoned us. You have not left us. But you have been with us every step of this time. And you are a good, good father who says to come to you in all of our needs. So we come lifting up those things that are on our hearts that cause us to struggle, that distract us, that weigh us down, Lord, so we can't see you. We lift them up. We come to you in celebration of life, Lord. For this day, we celebrate the gift of this day and the gift of life. 
So Lord, help us to go as those who are full of life, who know that we have eternal life. Help us to go as your joy-filled disciples out into all the world to share that good news, to share that joy, to show your love that you have given us to others because you have loved us beyond measure and unconditionally. And we come this day praying the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's scripture reading is Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
that you might be worried about. We're squeezing now without letting go of those worries. Look around and see if there's something you could pick up. Like, let here, I can't give that a shot. There's something. What if I try to pick something up? You try to pick up something kind of small and see how it goes. Oh. All right, how, how's it? Look, look, oh. I, look, I dropped mine. Um, see, I couldn't do it. Well, let's see if I can get it for you. Oh, no, I can't, I can't get any of that stuff. I don't either. How'd it go for you guys? You know what? When we're holding on like that, it makes it hard to do stuff. And But when we let it go, whew, that is so much easier. It really is. Because when we hold on to all of that, we cannot do the things that God has planned for us. No. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna try it. Okay, I'm gonna be able to try. Okay, here goes. I'm gonna try. I'm worried. I can't do it. Okay, help. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh. I. I feel better. Oh my goodness, my back's not hurting anymore. It was heavy. There were a lot of worries. Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7 it says do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by petition and prayer with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You're right I, I feel better and I, I gave the worries to God and I don't have to carry them anymore. So remember, friends, make sure you give your worries to God. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for these children who are listening and the families who support them. We ask that you help us to give our worries to you. We love you, Lord, and thank you for helping us and being with us in all that we do. Amen. Welcome. My name is Andy Lambert. I'm one of the pastors at Oak Ridge United Methodist Church. We're beginning a new sermon series called Real Life Heartache, Real Biblical Hope. And I reached out to some folks to ask them, what are the things that you're facing? What are your real life heartaches? And the number one thing I think can be summed up into anxiety, fear, and worry. Before I begin talking about what I want to talk about, can I tell you what I'm not going to talk about? I'm, I'm not going to talk about as much clinical anxiety, a level of worry that becomes so debilitating that you cannot function. Uh, uh, for those kinds of concerns, um, I, I recommend that you, you seek counsel. L let me give you an example of the difference between everyday anxiety and what I would call a, a clinical level of anxiety. If uh, I were walking down the street and I fell over and I cut my leg, just had a little cut on it, uh, I would go to almost anyone in our church. Uh, if you were right there, I would say, can you help me out a little bit? Do you have a Band-Aid? Can you help me clean this wound a little bit? Do you have any antibiotic ointment that you would put on it? So I, I would go to almost any of you for that kind of help. But let's say that I was... I don't know, we'll come up with something wild. Let's say that I was riding a unicycle and I fell off that unicycle and I cut my leg badly. I would go to Aaron Bull or one of the Dr. Goldings or uh, any a number of you who are in the medical uh, profession. If it rose to the level of an injury that was very serious, uh, I, would, I would seek out more than, than just uh, help from any person. And so I want to talk to you about uh, that kind of worry and anxiety that all of us face. So let's start with that. Hello, ma'am, sir. I finished my inspection and um, I got some bad news. Did I give you my 
card um, Philippian exterminators. And uh, I wish, I wish, ma'am, I had some better news to tell you, but you've got an infestation of anxiety. If you want to look at the crawl space underneath, it's, it's beginning to chew away at the very foundations of your home. And I got worse news. I went into the study where I think your husband spends a lot of time and worries all in the walls. It's laid eggs and it's been there for some time. It's, you've probably been standing right next to it and you didn't know the level. I went into the craft room. Ma'am, I think you spend a lot of time there. Anxiety everywhere. Your kids, it's growing. And I, I wish you I could tell you that I could just spray some magical stuff. But this stuff's pretty impossible to kill. You can block it for a little while, but it's going to come back. So I'm going to suggest something. It's a little out of the box. I'm going to suggest that instead of trying to get rid of it, I'm going to suggest you turn, try to learn to live with it. Not, not ignore it, but just live with it. I don't have much experience with this level of dealing with that kind of infestation of anxiety and worry, but I do have a friend. Um, I wrote his name down, but I, I don't have my glasses. I, I think his name is Jesus. I can't read it. Yeshua? I'm not sure. But anyway, he recommended if you want to deal with the worry and anxiety that's in your life, take on renters. I know it sounds weird, but if you let some people into your house, let them live there, they can kind of create an environment where anxiety doesn't grow. Just try it out. I, I, I'm going to invite two in, prayer and petition. Um, you, you probably want petition to come in first, but can I invite prayer and praise to come in? C come on in, meet this family. I'm telling you. If you let praise into your life, you're going to have less worry. Seems a little milk toast, doesn't it, right? You're worried about life. You, you, you spend some anxiety in your heart about what's happening in the world, what's happening in your family, health concerns you have, people that you love who are hurting. Seems a little weak for me to say, hey, why don't you pray more? Or... Uh, the, the first part of this scripture is uh, don't be anxious. Do not have anxiety about. When, if, if we only did that part, don't worry. When in the history of the world has that ever worked? Has it ever worked for somebody who's just worried about something to say, stop worrying? It doesn't work. And there's more to it. I love how Paul says to the Philippians to... Um, to not be anxious, but instead of, have prayer and petition. And, and we think of those as the same thing and they're very connected. Petition is when we ask God for things. Lord, be with my parents who are facing something. Be with my children. Lord, heal my body. Lord, help me find a job. Those are petitions. But I, I love that how Paul separated prayer and petition because there is more to prayer than just asking God for stuff. There's nothing wrong with, with pouring out our heart to God and asking God to intervene in our lives, but there's more to prayer than just that. And throughout Scripture, there is a pattern to prayer. That doesn't mean when you're driving down the road, you can't just lift up a prayer, Lord, help me. God, uh, I, I pray, God, that this is a day that I'm aware of your presence or, or help me as I'm dealing with this issue. But there's a pattern to prayer in Scripture that is important, that helps us shape how we deal with the worry of our lives. And the pattern of prayer is to begin with praise. To begin our prayer appraising God for who He is. I believe there's a, a Monty Python skit that begins with someone turning to God in, in, in the clouds and saying, omnipotent, all-knowing, all-loving, all-caring, all-powerful God. And, and this Monty Python skit, God says, I don't want to hear all that nonsense. Cut it out! Of course, 
God doesn't need an attaboy from us. He, he has no need for us to remind Him what a good God He is. But when we begin prayer, speaking the attributes of God, His holiness, His love, His steadfastness, His forgiveness, when we begin with that, it prepares us for the petitions that we're going to ask, for the things that we're going to ask God. And it also reminds us that God is bigger than our problems. And if it feels awkward to you, if, if that's not a part of your life, you've never done it before, can I encourage you to just start with the Psalms. The Psalms are a prayer book of the church. And say back to God God's Word. And even if you feel uncomfortable, it doesn't feel natural... I encourage you to continue that. Talk about who God is in your prayer life. Because we need to be reminded of what a great God He is. If you're writing something down, I want you to write this down. If you're trying to remember something from the sermon, I want you to remember this. If you want to reduce the power of anxiety, increase the power of your praise. Have you ever just sung a song of praise to God in the quietness of your prayer life. I do it, and I'm a terrible singer. But it, there is something in the power of praise. It is why it is such an integral part of our worship service to praise God because it speaks into our lives who He is. Now, if you let petition into your life, that is to ask God to intervene in, in your life. To ask God to, in, in some way to help you with the things that you're dealing with. What is that like? What does that mean? I, I, I think the way I would want to phrase it, and this is odd, but in prayer, God is like a terrible therapist and an ordinary husband. Can I say that again? In prayer... God is like a terrible therapist and an ordinary husband. If you've been through therapy, you know that one of the things you do is you, you, you talk it out with someone. And if you've talked it out with a friend, that's a little bit like therapy. You, you're sharing what's on your heart. You're, what are you concerned about? And so in prayer, we're saying, Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm worried about our nation. And Lord, I'm, I'm praying for our leaders. And Lord, I'm, I'm worried about my church. And Lord, I, I'm, I'm worried about those who are, who are going to school. And, and I'm worried about college students. So pour that out. But uh, uh, at least one of the jobs of a therapist is to just listen. Now, do therapists, of course, respond and give advice and all those kind of things. But if you shared with a therapist a problem that you were having with some sort of addictive behavior where, where you were uh, uh, obsessively doing something, you know, uh, eating too much bread. And you shared that with your therapist and uh, talked that. And then when you got at home and you reached into the cabinet to, to get out a loaf of bread and there a therapist popped out going, Boo! I thought we agreed you weren't going to do this. That's a bad therapist. We pour out our heart to God. But we pour it out knowing that God's going to intervene in our lives. We may ignore that. We may close our eyes to it. But God's going to put things and people in our path to begin to redirect our lives. Um, I said that prayer is a little bit like an ordinary husband. This is a generalization. Not all husbands are like this and some wives are like this. But in general, I think it's fair to say that sometimes a, a, a wife will come home and she'll just want to talk about what happened. She's not looking for an answer, just wants to talk about what's happened. So she'll come home and a husband might say, how was your day? And she'll say, you know, Karen rode with me to work and uh, she was just pouring her heart out to me about what's going on in her life and I'm so worried about her and we came to the light and the car made a funny noise and she started crying and we just pulled over and I, and I just talked to her for about 30 minutes and, and I'm just, I can't let it go, I'm so worried about her. And the husband often responds, so what kind of noise did the car make? And have you taken it into the shop? What, what did it sound like? Husbands want to find something that they can find a solution to. 
And so when we seek God in prayer, uh, we better be willing to hear God's answer. It's no use to pour our heart out to God if we're not going to follow where God leads us. And that is revealed in Scripture. That is revealed in, in, in living in Christian community and having others who can, can give us good and godly advice. But it doesn't matter how much the advice they give us if we're not willing to walk in that path. And so be bold in asking God, but also be bold in in walking uh, in obedience. And then if we want to deal with the the uh, low-level grade fever of worry that all of us have, just a little bit above normal, we got to let thanksgiving uh, into our lives. And this is universal. You don't have to be a Christian to know the power of gratitude. Uh, There have been study after study in cultures of varying economic levels. And it is universally true that the more grateful people are, the more content they are in their lives. And so it it sounds like a a silly thing to do. But a, a list of gratitude to begin your day being thankful to be alive, being if you've got a job that's bothering be you being thankful that, uh, that you have a job. If you don't have a job and you're wanting one, be thankful for the opportunity you might have that, and, and any resource that you can have that can help you through this time. And, and, and if you're sick, to be thankful that we've got doctors and nurses and medicine. Just to find every way possible to give thanks. And of course, as, as someone who calls upon the name of Christ, as believers, we get that one extra benefit. When we say thank you, We know who we're saying thank you to. Maybe you've heard this before, but it is absolutely true. It is very difficult to be grateful and to be worried at the same time. That doesn't mean as Christians we don't ever worry. In fact, we should worry. There are things in this world that that ought to bother us. But we bring those worries to a God that we're grateful for. And then the last part of this, and then that we'll get a peace that transcends understanding for God to guard our heart. Some of you looking at me may not ever think that I was once a security guard, but for a summer I was a security guard at a now defunct department store called Memco. And my uncle got me the job and um, uh, got a uniform and everything. I looked very much like I was a law enforcement person. And, uh, but I found out uh, uh, after a couple days that it wasn't my job to keep people from shoplifting who were coming into the store. My real job was to keep the employees from stealing from the store. And that was an eye-opener for me. Um, a life of praise, a life of repentance, a life of, of seeking God, giving over to Him our worries. Uh, it's guarding our hearts from ourselves. Very few people are going to hurt you more than you hurt yourself. And so that... that that peace that transcends understanding. It it means that to invite Christ into your house, into your home, and into your heart is something beyond words. It's something that cannot be explained. You don't need a sermon about Christ in your heart. You need an experience of Christ in your heart. And when, when Christ is allowed in, worry doesn't stand a chance. And so in every way, in every opportunity that you can, in the reading of Scripture, in, in worship, in being involved in mission and ministry, in Bible study, in praying with others, every chance you get, let Jesus in. And I do believe you're going to find Worry every day and every moment loses its grip on you as you grip the hand of the one who died for you.
In Jesus' name, amen.